Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmosso at the 1916company.com. It is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to us directly, tmosso at the 1916company.com. Today we're discussing a watch that launched as part of the bumper crop in the 2012 model year was a big one, 40 years of the Royal Oak, and almost every model was either new or redesigned. I was shocked to find I'd never previously reviewed the 15450 Blue Dial Stainless Steel Royal Oak Midsize, so that is what we are discussing today. So it is the Royal Oak Midsize, the 15450 ST in steel, 37 millimeters in diameter, 9.8 millimeters thick. If we just measure the edges of the case, then lug to lug, it's 46.7, but if we measure these little end links, they're called plots. The actual rigid horizontal distance across the wrist is 49.3 millimeters. Now the watch wears fine on my wrist. I've always felt that Royal Oaks wear large. Something about the shape of the case, the integration of the bracelet. On the wrist, this looks more like a 39 or a 40. And to be perfectly honest, when you buy a Royal Oak, size down a size or two, a millimeter or two, that is to say, because they all wear larger than expected. I would recommend this for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. May maybe only 13 and a half if your wrist is oval and flat. If your wrist is very round, you probably want to have a 14 centimeter circumference wrist or larger to wear this watch well. But you can see it does fit well and it is very flat with a sloped bezel so it'll slide underneath the cuff no problem. Taking a quick look, what you're paying for with a Royal Oak, other than obviously the Audemars Piguet pedigree, is the fact that a lot of time goes into finishing these. And it's not so much about the movement, though the movement is nice, it's about all of these external parts, bezel, case, clasp, bracelet. It takes 9 to 11 hours to finish all the pieces of a Royal Oak bracelet, and it's time well spent. You can see little things that's only evident when you take a close look, like the inner faces of these plots are polished. You could easily miss it just staring at the bracelet externally. And then we have this lovely polished bevel that runs perfectly aligned from the expanding bevel on the, the lug shoulders down each and every link. Beautifully polished in profile vertical satination from the top, longitudinal satination, a pronounced taper down from the integrated bracelet and lug all the way to the clasp, which is now quite robust. As you can see, a combination of satin finish and media blast. It is a sequential close, so one side closes before the other. Twin trigger release and thick gauge steel, though, mean that this is robust enough to be on an offshore. It's a very impressive clasp structurally for a watch of this size. You can see that the bracelet is held to the case using screws and bars. That is the consequence of spending more time and a little bit more money making the case. Spring bars are not always reliable. On a fairly heavy and expensive watch like this, you want screws and bars. Of course, we have the rounded octagonal bezel. This originally coined by designer Gerald Gento when he created the first Royal Oak in 1972. The rounded octagon was inspired by a vintage diving helmet. And you can see we have these little countersunk bolts in white gold, and they are white gold. You can see they're a little bit warmer in tone than the silver steel. The crown is also hexagonal and a nod to those bolts. Screw down crown with 50 meter water resistance means this is surface swimmable. Always an element on Royal Oaks. You can see that the bezel gasket is very slightly expressed and that the character line of the bezel continues into the mid case and the case back. The dial is the blue, which is often considered the most sought Royal Oak dial style. And while production methods aren't nearly as hit and miss as they used to be when the exclusion and rejection rates were very high, still these tend to be reserved for premier retailers and AP boutiques. Logo, hands, and indices, all white gold, so they won't tarnish or oxidize over time. We'll do a quick loom shot here, so you can see the watch is quite respectably loomed. It is a sporting watch, after all. And then we have a hobnail dial that is the Grand Tapisserie. It is a large hobnail, not the Petite, not the Mega. This is still pantograph cut. The Grand and the Petite they are both cut on pantograph mimicry lathes using 19th century artisanal technology, whereas the megas are stamped. That's what you would find on an offshore. And they're between 10 and 20,000 individual little bumps on the style. You can see there's a texture between every hobnail and then over the top as well. We have hacking seconds and a quick set date. And one of the great innovations on the Royal Oaks post 2012 was the date discs started being the same color as the dials. Flip it all over. We have manufactured cal. 3120, automatic winding, 
bi-directional action, 60 hours of power reserve. We have the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet family, reminding you that since 1875, Audemars and Piguet is the oldest continuously family-owned and run watch brand in Switzerland. Three hertz speed rate, 40 pivot joules. We have a full balance bridge, almost like a bat wing with a free-sprung gyromax style balance. The full bridge and the gyromax make for greater shock resistance, and the gyromax arrangement also allows for more precise adjustment. This is a bi-directional winder. Audemars Piguet didn't want a unidirectional rattle like a 7750, hence the decision, but they use hybrid ceramic rotor bearings to regain some of the efficiency lost to the bi-directional winding. And again, it's nicely decorated and handsomely architected. I think you could say that the architecture, the shape, proportion, and relative positioning of all these pieces, quite handsome. If you love this watch, reach out to us, tmasso at the1916company.com for pricing.